G'day everyone and welcome to Brushes with Beck. In today's video I'm going to be doing a graphite drawing. You can see um, the range of pencils I'm going to use here. I've selected from a 4H to a 9B and also a uh, basic graphite pencil which I didn't actually use. Now to begin with it's been a while since I've done a picture solely in graphite so I actually swatched out my pencils um, on the paper that I'm using and the paper that I'm using for this is a Bristol paper 300 GSM um, in addition to having a cat helper so I just did some quick little swatches to sort of remind myself of the range of values of these pencils before I got started. Now it has been probably a year and a half since I've done a graphite piece but a graphite bird drawing was actually what got me back into drawing to begin with so I really wanted to revisit that and have a go and really experiment with those values and graphite is extremely good for practicing values and getting those accurate so what I've done is I've gone in with the lightest uh, that I've chosen which I believe was a 2H I've gone in with that pretty much over the whole piece except for the brightest white highlights and I've done a soft layer with that and then blurred that out with the cotton bud. Following that I have gone in with I think it's the H pencil, um, honestly I can't remember which one, I didn't use all of the pencils, um, I tended to skip a couple here and there and I've just gone in and I haven't gone over every area of the piece but I've gone in with mainly to suggest those darker areas and any sort of lighter to mid-tones I've gone over with this color not the color with this pencil as well and once again blurring that out with the cotton bud now really the only areas that you need to leave bright white of the paper is actually those vivid white highlights on the piece so I am using the eraser in some areas to lighten up some places and recover the paper before I go in with a darker pencil. Not all of those areas will remain bright white but I find it's easier to erase early on and bring back some of that white paper before coming back in with some darker shades and um, trying to recover it that way. So now I'm moving into one of the B pencils. This is I think the 2B and really starting to get in some of that um, that darker shades, I actually it might be the 3B and just working through, as you can see I'm applying a little bit more pressure in those really dark shadows but with graphite you don't really need to apply a lot of pressure like you sometimes do with colour pencil You let with graphite you let the pencils do the work themselves because you are using darker or lighter shades now if you've never used graphite before for a piece the B pencils are softer the higher number they get which means they also apply darker with less pressure whereas the H pencils have a harder uh, lead I suppose and they are much lighter in color the higher that number gets so which is why a HB which is what is commonly used in schools and for writing and whatever else is a common pencil because it is middle of the range so adding in that darker color and some detail into the head feathers but I'm also blurring that out again with the cotton bud and that's just to soften up those details and I can come back in over the top with darker colors yet again in order to refine that detail and you can see I'm pulling out highlights there with the Tombow mono eraser and really making sure that I retain that white of the paper so I did really enjoy working on this and it was quite a bit of a learning curve. I was under a bit of a time crunch. I set myself a time limit of two hours for this piece and I absolutely would have loved to have spent a long time on it, detailing it, working on it more thoroughly, but I really wanted to keep to that time limit and just work through that. So I managed to get this done in about an hour and a half, which was pretty good and it still turned out decent. I particularly like the head but overall it turned out really nicely. So working in this darker color I'm refining those really dark areas where the dark heavy shadows are and also starting to add a little bit of that detail, refining some of those little feather details and adding those in there. 
um, working and building that up to be much more rich, vibrant tones. Because at the moment it is very, uh, very one value, even though I've used a few different pencils, but when adding these really dark um, values on, then it really starts to pop. Now this bird that I'm drawing is a little pied cormorant. It is actually a younger bird, so it doesn't have quite um, the full yellow beak that an adult bird would have, but that doesn't really matter because it is in grayscale. But just in case you were wondering from my reference photo there. So because it is just a black and white bird with a little bit of brown in the head, I thought it would be an interesting study for using graphite, just a bit of easy practice in terms of not having to translate colour to values. So overall it was pretty straightforward and I had a lot of fun with it. Like I said, I've worked from the lightest value to the darkest value and there's no reason you can't erase your erase some of your pigment and work in details over the top of it. It enables you to get depth in those feathers and different textures. So layering those different uh, values on top of one another going from lightest to darkest will help create a nice amount of depth. And perhaps with this I haven't gone quite as dark as I could have with some of my mid-tones there, but I think it's turned out pretty well all the same. It was quite tricky to balance um, the feathers being black with the the highlights that are on those feathers, that glossy sheen that's on there. It was hard for me to find a balance between how light is too light for those glossy feathers. Now cormorants don't have waterproof feathers like ducks do. They have, because ducks and other some of the birds have uh, I suppose an, a gland where they use that gland to spread I guess I think it's an oil or something over their feathers which protects them from the water so they remain buoyant and their feathers don't get completely soaked. Cormorants however don't have that gland and so if they had it they wouldn't be able to dive properly for fish. So because they don't have that they are diving underwater and their feathers are getting completely soaked which is why you see them sitting out in the sun to dry off because otherwise they can't fly anywhere because their feathers are completely soaked through. So it's quite interesting. So because of that, cormorants often have quite a sheen to their feathers. They can look a bit oily, a little bit slick, and that's because their feathers are often soaked through and a bit <laughs> bedraggled from swimming in the water, hunting for their fish and other food that they eat. So this one that I'm drawing was drying itself off. Often they have their wings sort of half stretched out, looking a bit like a looking like they're sort of hanging their wings there and that's just them drying that off more efficiently. So once I've added more of those darker values in, once again I'm erasing a little bit of that pigment with the mono eraser, pulling out some of those highlights and working in some of that detail with my really dark one. I went in with the 9B for the darkest and really pushed those really really dark values to try and get as much realism as possible. So there you have the finished piece. I love the little close-up of the face there. That's probably my favorite part. I found the back of the bird and the wings much more difficult to do and much more tricky to get it looking as realistic with such a quick piece. But thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, click that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, comment down below, and I'll see you again next week for another video. Stay creative.